Early in the year 1896, our boy of two years was taken ill, and the regular physician was called. The boy grew no better under his treatment, but lay helplessly on his back, unable to walk or stand. After giving this physician a reasonable trial, we called another, and finally a third, and fourth, with no better result. All stood high in their profession, yet each diagnosed the case differently. When summer came, and the boy's condition had not improved, we took him to the country to see what good air and nature could accomplish. While there, someone suggested that we consult a spinal specialist. This we did immediately on our return to the city, and the fifth diagnosis was Potts disease of the spine. The boy was put in the care of the best specialist in Boston, and while under their charge was kept on his back, strapped down tightly to a canvas stretcher, or encased in a heavy steel brace with an auxiliary head support, which allowed no movement of head or neck in any direction. After several months, the boy walked, but in spite of all precautions, grew deformed. At the end of six years' treatment with local specialist, we took him to celebrated orthopedic specialist in St. Louis, in whose charge he remained four years. Except for superior mechanical appliances, the treatment was practically the same. A night brace was substituted for the stretcher, but under no consideration was the boy allowed to be at any time, day or night, without support and I was told by the chief specialist in charge that it would be necessary for him to wear a brace or support until he reached manhood. In the meantime, another complication had arisen in the form of acute bronchitis, which developed rapidly and seriously. Again, physicians were consulted both in Boston and New York. This time the diagnosis was similar, the drugs various but ineffectual, and lastly came the verdict that the boy must be taken away from the east winds. We were preparing to make the change needful to save his life when Christian science was recommended to us. At first we ridiculed the idea. Then, believing it could do no harm, if not any good, we decided to give it a short trial. A nearby practitioner was found, and the boy put in her charge January 29, 1907. The bronchial attacks ceased from that time and have never returned. After three weeks' treatment, the braces, which he had not been without for ten years, were taken off. They were needed no longer, for the boy was well. During the past year, he has grown stronger, straighter, and added between one and two inches to his height. It now seems as if the harder the east wind blows, the healthier he gets. He engages in all boyish sports and walks between four and five miles each day to and from school. Miss J.W. Robbins, Boston, Massachusetts. Now a second letter confirming this. My attention having recently been called to a book, the writer of which attacks Christian science, challenges proofs of its cures, and refers to those who seek such cures as the adult ignorant who are in need of state supervision, I dare to tell something of my own experience with Christian science. A little over a year ago, I was a scoffer as regards to Christian science. But the healing of my son changed my views entirely. After years of appeal to the best physicians and finding no arm to save, we were at the point of despair when friends recommended Christian science, and we finally determined to try it in the hope that the bronchial trouble might be alleviated. Our confidence did not extend to the possible cure of the spinal condition mentioned by my wife, but we placed him in the hands of a good practitioner burning all Materia Medica bridges behind us. In three weeks, he was not only free from the bronchial and rheumatic trouble, but also from the spinal trouble. The braces worn for over 10 years were taken off, and the boy was well. This was in February 1907. 
In spite of the unusually severe weather of that spring, he had no trouble of the bronchial nature and was absent from school only two days, whereas previously he lost more than half his schooling. Last fall, he walked nearly five miles to and from school and even essayed to play rugby. He has grown more than ever before in the same length of time. He's had no medicine, nor has he used the braces since February 1907. As to ocular demonstration, in proof of the above, we can show the brace worn so long, the record of growth before and after Christian Science treatment, and also a letter written to us a short time before we tried Christian Science by the eminent specialist who had the case, telling us that not even the auxiliary head support could, in his judgment, be removed. John W. Robbins, Boston, Massachusetts. Christian Science and Legislation, pages 97 through 101. And this was read from a century of Christian Science Healing, pages 63, 64, and 65.